Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide, this time for the One-Armed. This is the most searched Brotato class on YouTube, and the one that's been requested of me, so this is the guide that we're going to do. I'm going to take a second and talk about the unique mechanics of this class ahead of the gameplay, so if you just want to skip straight to the gameplay, that'll start in a couple minutes, but I feel like there's a couple of things that are worth talking about for how this class works that aren't necessarily intuitive, so I want to just go over those before we start. So how this character works is you only get one weapon, and you have triple attack speed, plus 200% attack speed, and damage modifications, and this is for anything with the word damage in it, so that includes the flat damage for ranged melee and elemental damage, as well as, of course, the percentage damage, are doubled. This character, it turns out, has no upsides. It's actually all downside. This is just a straight nerf of a default character with no other abilities. Um, you might be thinking, well, triple attack speed, double damage, that sure sounds like some buffs, but you have to put that into the context of only having one weapon. So a normal character has six weapon attacks. We have one weapon that attacks three times as fast for twice as much damage, so we're even on DPS. But that doesn't count the base damage of each weapon. So a normal character has 60 base damage from six weapons, which have 10 base damage each. Um, we have 10 base damage times three for our tripled attack speed. So we're effectively 30 damage down on a normal character, 30 damage per second. Um, in addition to that, we don't get synergy bonuses from having weapons, so that's hundreds or even thousands of free material worth of stats that this character never has access to. Also, our shops are worse because you need to find an on or above level weapon in order to level it up. You can't store lower level weapons in the hopes of combining multiple of them into a higher level weapon. So overall, this class is basically all downside. There are There is one upside, which is that the damage modification being doubled does apply to non-weapon sources of damage. So if you were to take a torch and apply burning, the burning damage would be doubled. Um, if you were to uh, pick up an item like the alien eyes or the cyber ball that do damage based off of your health or your luck that don't rely on a weapon attack to do damage, that damage would be doubled. Construct damage isn't doubled because we don't get double engineering. We get double damage, which doesn't apply to construct. So turrets and stuff are, are not particularly valuable for this character. Overall, this character is basically just playing on challenge mode. So it takes a while to find, I think, a consistent and strong build for this character class. So it doesn't surprise me that this one is so heavily searched. There's a couple other minor things that you might not think of at first, like, for example, melee is much worse on this character because you can only attack in one direction at once if you have only one weapon. So going up the middle of the map as a melee character is much harder. Um, so you generally, I think, want to be ranged, and I think ranged characters are typically a little worse in this game than melee characters, so that's a downside. You also lose access to a bunch of key items like coffee, for example, is a very efficient item. 10% attack speed for minus 2% damage. The damage loss is doubled for us, and the attack speed doesn't do anything. A normal character would apply that 10% attack speed across six weapons. We only apply it across one weapon, so it's one-sixth as effective. And then it also scales negatively with the attack speed we already have. So atta purchasing attack speed on this character is basically useless. In addition, a couple items that are really key on ranged characters, which we do want to be, are more painful to purchase. So like the ricochet item, which adds an extra bounce to your attacks uh, at the cost of minus 35% damage, is minus 70% damage for us. So it's not impossible to buy because you will get to stack percentage damage pretty high, but you have to keep in mind that those key items are, the downsides are much more pronounced than they would be for other characters. So anyways, that's kind of the mechanical digression for this character. What we're going to do in order to mitigate that a little bit is I'm actually going to start with the Ghost Axe. The double damage from the Ghost Axe, or the, the damage that you stack up from the Ghost Axe by killing things is doubled. So we do get double value out of each kill with the Ghost Axe. 
So we're going to start with that, and for the first couple waves, we're going to farm damage with the Ghost Axe. We should be able... To, oh, I accidentally stomped a spawn there. That was bad. We should be able to get at least one damage buff out of this first wave. There we go. We just triggered. Trying to get as much money as possible. Generally, you want to stand kind of in the middle. Here, I'm going to start with some harvesting. This character actually has some real economy issues, so I think starting with a little bit of harvesting early helps a lot. I'm going to grab the Gentle Alien. That will help us stack up damage on our Ghost Axe. And we'll roll looking for another axe. We did find one. And I'll lock in another alien. And we're going to go straight to wave two. Doesn't really matter about taking damage in this early wave. I just want to make sure that I am always attacking. So that my axe is stacking some damage for us. All right, here we are going to take just some max HP. HP is always good. And then we're gonna grab this Ghost Axe and we'll grab the Gentle Alien. I'll roll once. Uh, here I am going to lock in this mutation. Ranged and elemental damage are both doubled. And while we do want speed on this character, uh, I don't mind losing the minus speed. And you might be thinking, you moron, you utter buffoon, why are you locking in ranged damage when you have a melee weapon? Well, we don't intend to keep the Ghost Axe. We have a secret plan. We're going to swap over to a different weapon as soon as we see it in the shop. Um, or around level 5, we're going to look for a ranged weapon that we can swap to. You do keep the Ghost Axe damage even after you sell the axe, so... That enables this type of strategy. Here I'm going to grab a little luck. Luck is really good. We've already stacked up 7 damage on the Ghost Axe, which is doubled to 14. I'm going to grab this. I will grab this HP regeneration, because we do want a little bit of ways to heal. And then I'm going to roll once more. I'll lock in the, the duck here, and I'll buy the lemonade. That will give us a little bit more ways to heal. And of course we want more luck. Have to kind of chase these guys down. Though it's not worth going too far out of my way for them. I'd rather just be clearing these large pods of enemies to stack damage on the axe. Definitely always clear the trees. It's even more important on this character to find like more trees, plus luck, that kind of economy item, because you struggle to pick up all your materials in a wave. One reason we start with an axe rather than like a ranged weapon is that then the materials spawn near us and we can more easily pick them up in the early waves. Here I'm just going to go with more percentage damage. And we will grab the Lost Duck. I do usually really like the Pocket Factory, but we are looking for some more particular items. Again, I'm going to roll past the Gentle Alien, even though I would usually buy it. I will stop and buy the tree, though. We haven't found a good ranged weapon. Let me keep on rolling a little bit. Okay, perfect. So we found a level 2 slingshot. That's going to be our ranged weapon, at least f until we find something better, but probably for the rest of the game. And we need to get that by the end of wave 5, which is where the Ghost Axe stops being really effective because there's just too many enemies to hit with only a single weapon, a single melee weapon. There's the loot guy over here. I'm going to see if I can get him, but... You often can't. We don't do just don't do that much damage, so it's hard to clear the loot aliens or elites. We will never be able to kill elites on this character. I'm gonna grab four HP regeneration though. That's really nice to hit a level three regeneration, and we'll grab some luck here. 
then I'm going to sell this and buy the slingshot. So we effectively spent like 30 materials um, in order to pick up that ended up being something like 50% bonus damage. So definitely a good deal for us. We'll pick up this alien and roll again. I'm going to grab this tree. Here's where being the one armed character hurts a lot. We can't take this slingshot looking for another slingshot. We need to find a level two or level three slingshot to upgrade. Never worth taking silver bullet on this class. You'll just never have the damage to kill elites no matter what you do. At least that has been my experience. <laughs> There's certainly some weapons you can use to kill elites, but I think they're much worse at clearing the just default waves, such that it becomes too inconsistent trying to win with them. This strategy of using the ghost axe for free damage and then locking a slingshot and swapping to the slingshot for the, the mid game has been the one I've, I've found the most success with. Definitely gonna need some bounces or some pierce and notice how it's a little harder for us to actually pick up all the materials because we're now using a slingshot which kills stuff across the map. I'm gonna grab three armor. Uh, scope is an item to definitely keep an eye out for on this character because it gives you all the stats you need. Range damage. Range is actually quite good with the slingshot. Make sure that you're always triggering the bounce. And minus attack speed is irrelevant for our character, basically. Lock in this uh, Cyclops Worm because it's plus 24% damage. And then we will go straight to wave 7. Saving 69 materials for the internet memes. All right, this level is often tricky, especially if we haven't found a level three slingshot yet, because the big guy, if, if we allow one big guy to spawn, it starts absorbing all of our shots, and then it gets even harder to clear the eggs. We're actually doing pretty well on damage for this point in the game, though, for this character class, so we're actually able to kill the big guys. And in fact, maybe I will be able to kill some elites later on. We'll see. All right, this is the best possible item we could have gotten. Um, this one fires extra damage irrespective of our... Fires extra shots irrespective of our attack speed. So it's really good for this character because it benefits from all of our damage upgrades and doesn't require us to have multiple weapons. Let's us clear enemies much, much faster. Here, I'm just going to keep going with more regeneration. We also do want lifesteal on this character. Both are good. Um... I typically favor regeneration, and you do use lifesteal less well than other characters just because you attack half as often. So your lifesteal is going to proc significantly less than on other characters. It's still good, though, because we're using a slingshot and have, like, the baby with a beard item, so we're still hitting a lot of things frequently. Wheelbarrow, I think, is a really good item to get if you get it before wave 10, so we'll pick that up. Uh, on the other hand, Peaceful B, which is an item I usually rate quite highly, Costing two ranged damage for us is just too unacceptable. That's just too much damage to lose. You can sometimes mix in some turrets if you get the item that causes your attacks to light enemies on fire, and then the turrets can apply that, um, and then that damage, the burning damage is multiplied by your damage. We don't have that item, and I would rather just get armor and max HP here. Uh, also, we can't buy the coffee, like I talked about earlier, even though this is normally a very efficient item, it doesn't do anything for this character, and is in fact an active negative. Oh, I walked straight into that guy for no reason, that was funny. Main thing we need at this point is just ranged damage. We also would take some movement speed, I've reduced my movement speed a lot, which is going to make it hard to dodge, especially on elite waves. You usually want to avoid having your movement speed go too far negative. Trying to get to that loot guy, but because we only have the level 2 slingshot, 
it's really hard to catch up to him and, and actually clear out the, all the chaff blocking my shots against him. So we're probably just giving up on the loot guy this round. Gonna make sure I'm killing the trees at least. Maybe he tanks enough bouncing shots that he dies, but we're not gonna be able to chase him down easily. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take, ooh, all of these are really nice. Um, let's actually go with more luck. I think getting higher level things is gonna be really important for us and more ranged damage, of course. Alloy is really good for this character. All of these effects are doubled and the crit chance is good. Um, losing 6% dodge, definitely a real downside, but I'm okay with that for now. I'm actually not going to take the helmet, even though I think it's a good item, at least until we can get something to repair our speed. I will take this pumpkin, even though we lose 4% damage instead of 2%, and currently don't have any piercing effects on our weapon. We are going to look for piercing effects later, and I rolled again to find this slingshot. We did find a slingshot finally, so we'll have a level 3 slingshot, which is a huge upgrade because it's an extra bounce. The bunny, I think, is worth locking it will save us some reasonable amounts of money over the course of the next few waves wave nine is one of the hardest waves for this character because it's all low health but numerous enemies um which means it's just about attacking as often as possible not about like the damage of each shot and this character attacks half as often as other characters Actually, slightly less than half as often usually because other characters will have purchased some attack speed by now and we don't have that option. I should say also that although I've spent a lot of time talking about the downsides of this character, I think it's actually really fun to play just as a challenge mode for this game. But you do have to go into it realizing that there are no upsides, it's all downside, and only play one-armed if you are looking for a challenge. All right, here we'll take some lifesteal. That'll help repair our lifesteal back up, uh, to the positives. I'm definitely taking max HP. We want to get that as high as we can. Here, there's a couple options. I could get my 50 luck, which I like to have 50 luck by level 10 because it makes level three items show up in the shop reliably. Um, we could also just take 16% damage. I think I'm going to take uh, dodge here and we can start building our dodge back up though. Slingshot level 3 gives us a third bounce. That's great. We'll take this. It saves us 13 immediately. The Gummy Berserker is not great for us. I'm going to take the 3 regeneration for minus 1 lifesteal is fine. Um, small Magazine is another item that is worse on this character class than it is on other character classes. Just because the attack speed is bad and the negative damage is doubled. But we have way more percentage damage than we do flat damage. So we do still want the Small Magazine. Um, I'm also going to take the Snail because even though we do need to increase our speed at some point. Minus 5 enemy speed is really good and it improves our future shops by removing a unique from the pool. Injection is really good for this character. And Cake is worse on this character than other characters, but still one of the better items that you can pick up in the game. And I will still take Metal Detector, even though we lose 10% damage. Uh, I think that ends up being quite worth it regardless, just because it's really good for your economy, which this character does need quite a bit of help with. I should be trying to stay a little more towards the center of the arena to be constantly attacking and also to give myself more options to dodge around. I tend to gravitate towards the edges of the arena just under the assumption that I'll need to keep the enemies in one direction from me, but because we're attacking basically enemies at random across the map, it's actually mostly better for me to be in the center of the arena. where I have more options to move and dodge. Of course, that doesn't help if I don't actually dodge the enemies, so we really do need to get our speed back up. Right now, my speed is really low. Overall, though, I'd say this run is going quite well. Damage is looking pretty good, and we're still clearing things out very well, which on level 10, this character has a really hard time doing. Um, 
I should say, I guess, level 5 through 7 is probably this character's weakest point, because normal characters will have their 6 weapons, and a big chunk of their damage will come from the base damage of those weapons, which we don't get. So at level like 5 through 7, this character class is significant is at its most at its weakest relative to other character classes um, and then we can start catching up the gap 20 luck will definitely take that's great and then here i'll take some crit chance just adding in a little crit chance to increase our damage is really good and this is a great shop for us wow this is actually an insane shop we get to pick up our level four slingshot uh, and we got to do that by buying a level three slingshot so we didn't have to spend the extra it would have been twice as expensive if we'd rolled a level 4 slingshot. And we get to pick up a Vigilante Ring, and we'll leave the Metal Detector locked. But Vigilante Ring, of course, is double, twice as effective on this character as other characters. We'll roll here, because the roll was free, and we get to lock an Alloy in as well. Looks like we probably are not going to be stacking dodge on this character uh, in this particular character, even though I usually do like to stack dodge quite a bit. But I've taken so many items that reduce my dodge, it's going to be hard to get it to a meaningful number by the end of the round. I might start re-rolling stats, which I usually don't like to re-roll stats too much in the level up screen. Um, but I might start re-rolling those just to find... A high level speed. And of course, always more range damage and everything is good. But any high level speed, high level life steal would be pretty good for us as well. The thing I'm most worried about at this point is elite waves because we won't have the damage to kill the elites and currently don't have the speed to dodge all their attacks. All right, there we go. We got 9% speed, so that catches us up a lot. I will actually even take it over 6 ranged damage here, just because our, our speed was so bad, and I think that was really causing problems for our character. Plus, we get 6 range damage from this alloy. We need to take the metal detector here. Wisdom is interesting. You lose 40% damage, but gain 10% every 5 seconds. I think this item is generally bad, because it lets enemies stack up, and then in the early rounds, and then there's just too many enemies on the field to deal with, so I'm just going to skip past it. Here I will take Gentle Alien, though. It's twice as effective on this character. I actually get a lot of extra spawns, and of course more, more ducks, more luck. It are really good. I will lock these handcuffs, and then I'm hoping that we pick up a little bit of max HP this round, because 16 range damage is too good to pass up. So even though this locks us at a fairly low max HP level, um, I think the handcuffs are just too good not to pick here. Yeah, there we go. Now we can move a little more easily and actually dodge this guy's attacks. I really wanted to get some damage. Maybe I can actually fight him? Yeah. All right, so this is unusual. We've stacked up enough damage that I can actually clear this elite. You don't really expect to be able to do this on this character. But because we have a, a legendary level slingshot already and have stacked up quite a bit of ranged damage, let me just quickly dodge away from him to heal up real quick and then we can go back and tank a little more. It's hard not to tank hits when you're act actively fighting the elites. Okay, I need to kill him so he stops shooting. There we go. You can see, even though we have this pretty high damage version of this build, and it's clearing the chaff very well because we got the uh, the baby with a beard item that spawns extra shots, um, normally you expect the enemy chaff to just get too in the way and for you just not to have the damage to clear through the elites. But we were able to do that with this build in particular, and even then it was hard. I'm going to recycle this repost, even though it does deal 78 damage back, that's pretty meaningless at this wave, and 25 materials is 25 materials. I'll lose a little more speed for the unique, the ugly tooth though, and here we lose 10% damage but get another metal detector, which is great. We lose 4 damage for this, but this helps get our dodge up to a meaningful level right away, and 5% lifesteal is actually really sick for us, so great drop on this cape. 
Um, here, I'm just going to reroll this because we're looking for max HP, but I won't turn down three ranged damage. And then I'm going to reroll this, looking for max HP, but again, won't turn down plus three range damage. So we're going to be stuck at 59 HP for the rest of the game, but hopefully we'll just have the damage to clear through everything immediately. The Triangle of Power is an interesting item for this character class. You gain 40% damage up front and lose 4% every time you take a hit. Given that we have locked our HP at 59 and are trying to just clear all the waves before we ever get hit, I'm going to take it. Usually I wouldn't recommend taking the triangle on this character class though, because losing 4% damage every hit, sometimes you just have to like build defensive stats and tank through in order to win on this character. Um, and often you can't clear the elites, so you end up just having to tank through them with health regen and armor. Um, the triangle can quickly remove all your damage. But on this particular build, where we're going for a more damaging build, just because of the items that have dropped, I think it'll it'll be good and pay for itself on us. 10% damage for 4 attack speed, we'll definitely take that. Uh, maybe I should have taken the clover first, actually. I will still lock that, even though minus life steal is bad. Um, so I should definitely have taken that if I'm buying it, because early luck is good. One of the successes of this build for us has been how much luck we've gotten. It's meant that we've found these high-level items and got some legendary drops in the level-up screen or from crates. Um, this character, just like all characters, but even more so for this character, is about building up economy. So harvesting, luck, I guess just those two stats, really. Healing is also a form of economy because it lets you play more aggressively and clear enemies rather than having to dodge and play more aggressively to go pick items up off the ground or pick materials up off the ground. And I guess you could also say damage is a form of economy because you just clear more enemies. <laughs> All right, we're not taking coffee here. I will start to take 9% dodge, though, because we can actually stack our dodge pretty high now. And we do need dodge and armor since our max HP is locked at 59. No point taking the, the muscly dude here, and actually I do want to repair my range if I can. Insanity is an item that's worse on this character than on other characters, but we already have 174% damage, so losing 6% for 6% crit chance is going to be good for us. Basically, you can think of it as if you have more th uh, more than twice as much percentage damage as you are gaining crit chance, then the crit chance is better. Here we get some max HP, but we would lose speed, and we really don't want to lose more speed. 10% attack speed and reduced cooldown of structures, not useful for us. We don't need attack speed and don't have structures. I'll keep taking more enemies, though. <laughs> and again, I'll keep taking more lost ducks, and I'll take this triangle as well. Trying not to take any hits, of course, but now it's even more important that we don't take hits because every hit costs us 8% damage, so I'm going to try to clear this elite as quickly as possible to avoid tanking hits. There's one hit that I took, so that's 8% 8, 8 damage down the drain already. This is one of the more difficult enemies. I think the best way to fight it is to move in kind of more difficult elites. Best way to fight it is to move in parallel to it um, in these circles around it so that it's always trying to shoot its circle of shots away from you. Like away from your direction of movement. That way you pass over it before they launch. You never want to be moving in the same direction as that circle of bullets on the ground, because then it will catch you and trigger underneath you instead of behind you. This build is honestly going way better than most one-armed builds do, so I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, I'll take the medical turret, three healing, just for whenever we're around it is totally fine. Um, and it's better than that 27 materials would have been. 10 elemental damage, 20 luck for minus 5 engineering. Well, we don't care about the engine. 
nearing at all, and we don't care about the elemental damage at all, but we'll take 20 luck. We actually are going to have 50 element or 40 elemental damage, so if we get items that apply elemental effects, that could still be really good for us. Take a free reroll, sure. Take the coupon, take the gentle alien. We'll take the metal, even though we lose 4% crit chance and crit chance is valuable. All these other stats are really good for us. More dodge. This is only 3% dodge, but extra dodge when standing still. I don't think that's worth picking up, though. I will take the lemonade, though, and then reroll. And then bag is, I think, still worth picking up here. It will still pay for itself before the end of the game. Maybe I should. No, I, I shouldn't have taken that. It's only, only four waves. So that was a wasted lock by me. I'll probably buy it now that I've locked it, but I, I don't think it was worth locking. So you might be thinking, wow, this character's broken, look at how much damage you've got, but just imagine the same damage, but times six. Or I guess half this damage, but times six. That said, the the baby with a beard bullets are something that this character does better than any other character. So that's a very key item for this class, and I'm not going to say you can't win without it, but it definitely helps a lot. This guy would do 10 damage because we don't have any engineering stacked, so we're just going to recycle it. Here I am going to continue to just buy defensive stats at this point so we'll buy some dodge actually i might get this range because range repairing our range back towards zero would be pretty good i guess i'll wait until after i've gotten to 60 dodge and some better defensive options to do that armor we're at 35 percent armor so actually i'm going to take some crit chance at 24 percent crit chance we crit pretty reliably Ooh, plus luck for every crit we have i mean that's not going to be tremendously useful for us but i it's cool and i've never gotten to take that item before i don't think so i'll take it tractor is definitely worse for us than other classes we lose 16 damage on the other hand it does mean doubling our harvesting it's still pretty late in the run though so i'm not going to do it on that being said i will take the tree i am now going to take the scared sausage we already have 38 elemental damage stacked up so this can give us a lot of options for clearing through more enemies. The fertilizer will never pay for itself by the end of the run, so we're not taking it. On the other hand, Baby Gecko is will probably pay for itself and also helps bring our range back towards zero, which is important. I'm gonna roll once more, and sure, I'll take a, another Gentle Alien. We've gotten so many of these. We have now plus 35% enemies. So we're making a lot of extra money from every wave because of all those enemies. One reason this character is able to stack so much damage is we kept finding gentle aliens early, which is why I think that that item is really, really strong. Worth taking on every character. Generally speaking, more enemy spawns is good for you. And the items that reduce enemy spawns, you have to think of as, like, if, if it's, say, minus 5% enemy spawns, that's also minus 5% money for the rest of the game. So you have to think about whether that's worth it to you for whatever effect that item provides. Ouch, took a hit there. Definitely need some defensive stats because we do still sometimes take hits. And against the... Wave 20 bosses will probably have to take at least some hits. There we go. Because we have so much luck, we are getting so many consumables every round. It's kind of sweet just watching all of them flood in, as well as several crates per round. All right, range and attack speed for minus life steal. I will not take this because I actually think that our lifesteal is helping keep us alive quite a bit, and I'd like to increase our lifesteal. I will take more armor, though. Here, I'm just going to take more range damage. 
I actually think our damage is good, and what I want is to upgrade speed at this point, because speed will help me dodge the final boss attacks. Lure is the best item in the game, in my opinion. It's economy and gives you a really good stat, so we're always going to grab that. And then here... We do generate a ton of consumables, so weird food is probably worth taking. Minus 2% dodge is not a huge penalty, and that increases our healing by quite a bit. Crit chance and dodge for range will snap that one off, definitely taking it. And lifesteal for harvesting is also actually quite good for us. Also, metal, we lose some crit chance, but we talked about why that's so good. And I think metal is just one of the best items in the game overall. I am very tempted by the weird ghost, but I think that's one of the ways that we could lose is by taking this uh, and then just getting splatted. Also, of course, the max HP we've locked, which I maybe have been forgetting in buying max HP, forgetting that I locked it at 59. Here we go. So ricochet minus 25% damage. So we lose 50% damage when we pick this up. And it brings our bounces from 4 to 5. So it's not as good for us as for other characters. It's still just really good, though. We just need to take this every time, I think. We can kind of play around our medical turret if we want. If we're worried about taking damage, and that can help heal us. With 5 bounces... We actually have a comparable number of attacks to a normal character with a non-slingshot weapon. One thing that makes this character viable, I think, is that slingshots are just really good. You can, of course, do it with other weapons, and you can... You can hold out to get, like, a good tier 3 weapon. Like a minigun, or a rocket launcher, leveled up rocket launcher, something like that. Um, if you're going to do that, keep in mind that this character scales with flat damage best. So items that attack frequently for small amounts of damage are better on this character than weapons that attack infrequently for large amounts of damage. We're going to take luck here. Sure, why not? And I won't take this. Actually, at this point, the minus two range damage isn't a huge penalty for us, and we do want to get our dodge to 60 if we can. Plus one damage for every permanent, plus one percent speed we have. So this is just plus one percent damage now, but we intend to build speed. So power generator is really good for us. I'm never taking white flag on anybody. Panda gives us HP and luck for minus damage. So we're actually not going to take this one because we can't increase our HP anymore. And our luck is already at 192. More trees we'll take though. Landmines we'll take. That can help. Apl that can apply our fire. Here I'm going to take 60 range because that gets our range back up to where we want it. Flamethrower is kind of an interesting weapon on this character. Uh, if you're looking to build something that's not slingshot, flamethrower is a good option. You can build elemental damage and use the flamethrower. We're locked, obviously. Lumberjack shirt is kind of useless to us at this point. We kill trees in one hit anyways, but I'm going to take it because it improves our shops. And I will take more speed and range. Ooh, more capes. Um, yeah, I'll take another cape for sure. The question is, do I want a cape or a gentle alien first? I guess I'll take the cape, lock the alien. And now we're at our dodge cap as well. Got another elite here. This is not one of the really tough elites because you can just stand in between its attacks. It does have a lot of health though, so we're a little slow killing it. Just going to keep moving like so. <laughs> Someone really gunning their engine outside, so I don't, I don't know if my audio filters <laughs> stopped that or if you heard somebody like drag racing or something on my street. Alright, so this is looking really good. Just clearing through everything here. Wave 19 is another one of the potentially dangerous waves, but I think our damage is high enough that we've, we're caught up and we get through this elite fight. And then the only thing that we have to worry about is having enough speed, dodge, armor, and 
armor and regeneration to tank through any hits we take in the final boss fights. So we'll take this. Life steal. We take one damage per second, but we get extra damage and extra life steal. I think the bloody hand is worth it. Um, one damage per second is not a small penalty, but we do mitigate that with our HP regeneration currently. And the extra life steal when we're doing all these bouncing attacks is going to be pretty good. Baby Elephant is an item that's always worth picking up on this class, I think. Notice that it does 207 damage. Um, partly that's just because we have a ton of luck, but also it's because we have a big, uh, high percentage damage. Here I am going to reroll. We're looking for armor. We're looking for ranged damage. We're looking for crit chance. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Alien, of course, we're taking. I'll take this guy. Now we even do have a bonus effect with it, with the elephant. More lifesteal, more regeneration we'll take. And, of course, more damage and more speed and more armor we'll take. And I'm obviously going to take an exoskeleton here as well. Even though we lose a little bit of lifesteal and regeneration, 5 armor and 5 crit chance is really good for us. And 5 speed is definitely not bad either. I'll take another armor here as well. We'll reroll once more. I'm gonna lock in this gentle alien and the lemonade as well as a lot of healing. So now we're taking one damage a second, but we are regenerating it at least. Let me know if you've made it this far. Let me know if you liked the mechanical digression at the beginning of the video. Um, trying that new rather than newly, rather than jumping right into the gameplay. Just try to give a little more insight into how the characters work. But if people just want to see gameplay, we can obviously do that. So here at, at Love Wave 90, we're, or 19, we're actually having a little bit of trouble keeping up with our damage. Enemies are spawning. I also have so many gentle aliens that there's just so many enemies. But that's why we have all these defensive stats and healing from consumables. Um, I'll take a free plus 10% attack speed, and we'll take this for sure. I'll take this for sure, because uh, just 50% chance to heal is really good. And we'll take plus four range damage. Let's also stack another gentle alien. Can I get to the full 10? I've never had the full 10 before. Armor is good. Crit chance would be really good as well. I'm going to take both of these items. And then... This one is HP regeneration at the end of a wave. Not so useful when we're heading into wave 20. Let's roll that again. None of these I really want. Uh, the bait is pretty good because it's 16% damage but for this character. But in wave 20, we don't want to make it harder on ourselves. Let's roll once more and see if we find something good. Sure, I'll take this padding. Nope, we have maxed HP already. So... Do I want the metal detector? Nope, not in particular. So I think we're just rolling again in case we can buy anything. We probably can't, but just looking and yeah, nothing that we can buy. Let's go straight into wave 20. Only ended with nine gentle aliens. So on this character, you, or with these bosses, you want to focus the octopus head boss first if you can. I think it's the more dangerous one. Um, and you want to stand kind of near it because of how circles work. That means that the circle effect that it always has around it is moving slower the closer you are to it relative to your position. I'm doing some pretty sloppy dodging here. But we've managed to stack our defensive stats high enough that it doesn't matter a ton. I don't think we're going to clear the bosses before the end of the wave, so let me go clear some other things and regenerate a bit. We can kind of walk in circles and avoid these shots. Nope. It's Our speed actually is lining up really badly against these guys. So walking in circles is still good because I can collect 
health pickups, but it looks like we are not going to be able to clear the bosses, which is what you really expect on this character class. At least not safely, we, we were just tanking too much damage there. I was kind of hoping I would get to actually kill the bosses with this guy, but you really just don't do enough damage even with this very high damage version of the build, so you end up just wanting to dodge a lot. All right, so that was the one-armed. I think that's one of the hardest classes to win with, so I am hoping that this guide helps a lot of people. Um, I think that the tech of starting with Ghost Axe and then switching to Slingshot or another ranged weapon is really important for making this consistent. We got like 70% bonus damage out of that, almost for free. Um, and as always, my friends, if you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for this and other strategy game content. And also let me know which class you'd like to see next. Cheers, folks. GG.